the votes are in the pouncing cat won so this is going to be the shape we're going to make of the cat for you and yep if i look like i'm wearing the same clothes it's not because i'm totally manky it's because i recorded this in the past this is yesterday so i can get started on creating this cat for you oh yeah and people have asked about this t-shirt before this is my felt like stabbing t-shirt i don't have any merchandise yet i was just making this because it's it tickled my sense of humor. But if you guys are interested in any kind of merch from little old me, then leave comments in the comment down below. And if you're new, I should introduce myself. Hi there, I'm Pam Duffy, and I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. And it's a Thursday, so every Thursday I make needle felting tutorials. So if this is something you're interested in, don't forget to come back every Thursday. Right, let's see what I do with this cat. Right, so first things first, we need to separate out some fibres to thicken up the legs and paws of this cat. So I've just made three strips of the fleece. Again, this is the carded white Corridale. And I'm just wrapping, starting from the paws, building up to the legs. This is just to make the legs a bit more thicker and actual real cat-like instead of cartoony catness. So at the minute, all I'm doing is wrapping it on. I will felt this to firmness later away from the camera basically I'm just showing you how I do it and I just needed an extra strip on the thigh there so just popped a little bit more on so wind it on felt it to secure it and do this over all four legs so they're just a little bit chunkier now I was trying to decide at this stage what kind of cat I was going for but so I just left it as as blank as possible. I had the options, I was thinking about making a very fluffy cat and showing you how to add all the fibres, but well, you'll see what I went for in the end. But yeah, so that's once once all four paws are wrapped and the cat's in roughly the final position. So next we're gonna add some more bulk to the rest of his body, a little pad under his belly a bit more, because cats are a bit more of a puddle of skin. I'm not gonna say overweight, although some, many cats are like many dogs and like many humans, they are quite overweight, but I'm trying not to make an overweight cat, but definitely a little pad of fleece under his belly and then wrapping around to thicken that up. This is like skin on top of the pad of, pad of fat there. And again, I just want to bulk up over his shoulders as well. So winding a wrap in a kind of figure eight. It looks a bit like a comedy cloak just now, but it'll be fine once we felt it. Felting to hold it in place. And remember, whenever you're adding things to your felt like this, that basically all the loose fibres you add, they're going to end up being felting down to about a quarter of the size so here i'm doing a wrap over his back and over the top of his thighs to thicken that up as well so yeah he definitely looks really huge at the minute but felting this down over several hours it's going to smooth it out and reduce the bulk quite a bit so all i'm doing now is literally i am going to take a couple of hours felting away at this just i've just added a little pad at the back there because it was looking not so good but um, I just felt over this, remembering like I always say, keep the needle in the perpendicular to the direction you want the shape of the, the final piece of the body to be. Felting it and also squeezing the cat, you know, making sure I'm holding him in the position. And after about two hours, I actually watched a couple of episodes of Sirens here. After about two hours of felting him, he's smoothed out and you can see what he looks like. That's much less less fat and just always going over to make sure he's firm and his back you know his body's smoothed out but now to work on him a bit more that neck needs a bit fattening out so again just another strip of fleece around the neck felting that in place and in little extras anywhere that needs a little bit more bulk and smoothing out as I go along you can add little bits of fleece over the join if you need to to make it not look like there's a join. Here I'm wanting to bulk up his head a bit, so I'm making a little wrap. It's like a strange little hat that goes from his chin round over the top of his head, and I'm building up the muzzle ever so slightly as well. So the face, at the minute, I'm almost thinking like exactly what I did with the needle felted ballerina. 
so it's kind of a lower bit of the face kind of pokes out slightly and then it dents in where the eyes are going to be and bear in mind the eyes are going to kind of be they're more towards the center of the face than you think there's there's almost as much forehead as there is rest of face on a cat so I'm squidging about with my hands and shaping this and trying to smooth it out but thinking of a ball shape that has a chin poking out of the bottom a little bit and a nice rounded forehead with it coming in a bit where the eyes are going to be.
So I've taken advice, especially from the lovely Magdalena, one of our one of our followers in the comments. She's always talked about wanting to see more of the tutorials, not speeded up so much. So I'm trying to show as much of this as possible. And I've actually only just speeded it up. It's it's two times faster because at regular speed it's fairly it's even more boring to watch. But at two times faster, hopefully this shows you an idea of exactly what I'm doing without having to sit through every single stab because it really does take a long time. That's the joy but also the hassle of needle felting. There's no there's no shortcuts. You need to put in every single stab and there's thousands of them. But it means I've got plenty of time to sculpt the shape out. As you can see now I've started um as I said the shape of the cat with a chin and dent in the middle and I'm just trying to make the chin look a little more pointed shape more cat-like, always just thinking of what the final shape I want it to be, although still at this stage I'm not really entirely sure the breed of cat I'm going to make, I just have cat in my head, anything that looks feline enough when I'm felting it, I'm trying to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. So now I've kind of made the decision that I want this to be a Siamese type cat. So I'm going to plop, stick in the eyes just now. So poking holes, like I said, in the centre of the face. Now, these are the clear glass eyes from Amazon that I reviewed before in previous videos. And I just coloured them in using Sharpie pens. I went for a kind of bluey green colour, which I thought would suit the idea of the cat that I was aiming for. So pop them in. I glue them in later off camera with the paper pole um, fabric stiffener and then I'm using a really dark chocolate colour. It's almost black but just slightly brown just for the, the points on this cat. So I'm going to cover the tail with a wrap of the brown and then we're going to work on the paws and up a little way on the legs. I don't want to go all the way on the legs. This is going to be one of the cats that's kind of mainly white with the brown points rather than the, the chocolate working right the way up the back. And now the legs are covered, although of course they need to be felted to smoothness. I want to work on the ears. So I've taken two similar sized strips of fleece, folded them into a triangle shape, and I'm just felting that into, into shape, into firmness. Now, a lot of people comment on me felting between my fingers like this, but actually I find it a whole lot safer. As you can see, the needle is going down in between my fingers. It, it's sliding between my fingers and never really actually coming into contact with my fingers. I find I'm a lot less safe on something like a felting mat because I'm felting down kind of 
and if I hit my fingers then I really do get a good chunk of finger whereas this way your needle just skims across your finger it doesn't hurt so I've taken again two similar sized strips of the brown just for around the edge and the back of the ears even though I'm making them one at a time I pinch off the same amount of fleece for both ears just so I always make sure it's, it's round about the same amount so if at any point I'm needing to add a little bit extra fleece to this to this side then I'll add a little extra to the pile that's waiting for the second ear and just felting away between my fingers I want it to be darker on the edges of the ear and down the back of the ear but I'm letting some of the fibres blend down into the front of the ear as well so it's got a bit of shading going on and just squeezing between my fingers a little bit as well to try and get the thinner shape of the ear and just pulling and manipulating it into shape as I need to and then obviously I'm going to make the second ear And after a good deal of felting away on these ears and smoothing out what we've added to the legs, we're ready for the next stage to the cat. And this is gonna be making his face. So we're gonna start off with two, two small balls for his cheeks. I'm just felting them in relatively firmly. And then they're gonna be applied just fairly low down on the face, just slightly above the bottom of the jaw. And yes, it does look a bit like a comedy moustache at the moment. All the sculptures go through stages of looking really ugly. So don't stress about that. Just keep working on it. Um, dogs can look like ducks or um, they often uh, look like frogs and cats go through some really ugly phases too. Here I'm working on the lower eyelid. So it's just folding a little sheet of fleece and a little strip of fleece pinching it between my fingers and just trying to get a straight edge this is going to be the eyelid this this straight edge this is the bit that's by the eyes so I felt in a way to make sure this is nice and firm obviously we need two of these bits 
and just mainly concentrating just entirely on this eyelid bit. The rest of it's just going to be loose fibres that will blend as we need to when we stick it onto the eye. And thinking about the shape of the eye when we attach the eyelids, you can um, attach them so that the eye is quite slanted up the way or quite straight across. And also how closed or open you make the eye gives quite a bit of character as well. So I've felt it on these eyelids slightly slanting up the way and now it looks like he's got a comedy mask. Don't worry about a little bit of bulk in the centre of the face here as well because that's kind of going to be important to support the nose. Now the next part is making his nose and his upper eyelids. I make these in one, one piece as you can see so it's, it's like a kind of M shape. Felting along the top for the eyelids and felting down for the for his nose and the very bottom is going to be in a kind of v-shape or a sort of arrow and always checking with the animal to see if it fits and if needs be felting to make the nose shorter or stretching it to make it longer and just making sure everything's where where it needs to be And then of course once you're happy with the size of this and it's relatively firmly felted the nose piece and the top of the eyelids we're going to pop it onto the cat. So the nose goes just where the two balls of the cheeks meet and then we're felting up and towards the eyes and the eyelid goes over in the direction you know whether you want it slanted more slanted or more straight we're just going up with the eyelids and when we're doing this we can open the eyes a little bit and make them into the shape we want. I eventually decided with this cat to make his eyes fairly wide open, didn't want him to look too sinister, just kind of open as if he's been curious about things. 
and in the end I actually tilted his head a little bit because when he was peering down it made me think of actually my own dog Mia um, a time when I decided I was going to do sit-ups with my head coming sort of close to the, so the sofa every time I lay down and she was on the sofa and every time I lay down and looked up she was kind of peering down at me with her head cocked a little bit quizzically like what on earth are you doing and I don't blame her it must have looked completely crazy until she found it was far more fun to whack my face with her paw as I went down. So that was the end of the trying to do sit-ups on the floor with the dog watching me. But the expression on the cat just reminded me of the expression of my dog at this point as well. Now obviously we need a lower jaw, so a little pinch just folded over and I'm making, it's a sort of end shape really, just felt in between my fingers, a curve at the top and then two sides, making it slightly larger than you think you need for the chin because you're gonna felt it in a little bit. But um, making, making sure to be careful, if you have it poking out too much, then it gives the cat a bit of a goofy expression. So just working with it until you're happy with how how long his chin is and then we're just going to apply that underneath the cheeks. And then once we apply the ears in position and felt them nicely firm, it's just an overall more felting to firm up and you're pretty much done. Just deciding how open you want the eyes, how firm you want everything. As this is a bit more of a Siamese cat, he has quite narrow cheeks, quite a long narrow face. So just working on that, but attempting to try and make him not look too austere while we're going about it but just felt all over it until you're happy and then that's it. So you guys asked and I delivered. Many hours later, here is the pouncing cat. I decided to make him a Siamese type cat just because I like the look with her little chocolate legs and tail um, and his little face. He's not showing up great on camera, but cute and took forever to get him to balance like that. So if you're making something like this, make sure and as you're felting, keep on checking that he's balancing because it really is quite precarious as all his limbs are so close together. So I hope you enjoyed watching me make this little guy and I hope that you've seen, especially with cats, the armature is a great start, but I prefer not to make these poseable because cats are so fluid the way their skin moves over their bones. So it's best to make the basic armature, get it into the shape you want and then add the extra fleece into the areas so you can get him looking more normal just in that one position. Now I've got a bit of good news hopefully for you guys. I was trying to decide what to actually do with this cat because obviously it wasn't made for a commission or anything. It was just made 
to show you guys about cats. So what I've decided to do is for the next week, he's going to be up on eBay. Once I get the listing up, I'll put it in the comments down below. So if you're interested in purchasing this cat, he'll be up for a very low starting price. So dive on in and see he's actually I've been playing around with him on my bookshelves and things and he stands ever so cutely just peering over a bookshelf so just anywhere where he's safe out of the road he'd hopefully be a great little curious curious addition although I bet you if you've got real cats they'll knock him off the bookshelf in no time so another kind of exciting news the beginning of this video yesterday I was talking about the t-shirt I had on and said they weren't for sale and stuff nosy about the internet and accidentally managed to design a t-shirt a mug and a sticker not identical to the t-shirt I was wearing you should see them on the screen just now but if you're interested in them I will only be advertising these I'll only be leaving the link in promotion to this video so if you're interested the link should be down in the description below if you fancy t-shirt mug or sticker with my little felt like stabbing logo anyway thank you so much for joining me don't forget come back every thursday if you're looking for needle felting tutorials if there's anything you'd like to see me make leave a leave a comment below and i look forward to seeing you next week thank you so much